This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk radio like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. How are you? It's the Ramble. It's another week of uh, this trudge towards death that we are doing. Uh, hey, listen, uh, we got a great show tonight. We have a lot to talk about later in the show about the treasonous activities of our president. But in the meantime, it is uh, Tuesday, and on Tuesday, we check in with a very special friend. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, from San Francisco, California, we used to call it San Frangima. Uh, it's Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Larry. Hello, everybody. Hello, Larry was the name of a hey. very unsuccessful television show. <laughs> that was uh, McLean Stevenson. McLean Stevenson, and it was considered to be one of the biggest failures in television in those days. And I think that was after he left MASH, right? Uh, yeah, it was the show he did after he left MASH and, you know, decided that he was going to uh, have his own TV show. And he came up with this thing, Hello, Larry. I can't even remember what it was about. <laughs> was I don't th- was he in radio on that? I, I yes, you're right. He was a ra- he had a radio show, like a morning radio show, and I think it yeah. lasted 13 weeks, and that was it. And in those days, shows yeah, usually he, he, huh? He loved Mash for that, which was <laughs> that one of the bigger mistakes people had made in the show business. He did leave Mash, show. didn't he? Yeah, yeah, um, which was the biggest show on television. Uh, but anyway, it, it, I don't think it, it only lasted like 13 weeks. And in those days, you usually got, well, the 26 weeks before they would decide, hey, we don't want you next year, you know. But yeah. it was that bad that they, so it's one of the well-known <laughs> failures of the time. Uh, well, who are some, what were some of the other great uh, TV failures? I remember... Well, My Mother, the Car, stands out as one of the most famous ones. Uh, With uh, Jerry Van Dyke. Jerry Van Dyke, and the car's voice was played by Ann Sheridan. And supposedly his mother dies and is reincarnated as his car. You know, I'm amazed that anybody was even able to sell that to a network. But in those days, you got to remember... You know, you had the Beverly Hillbillies. You had all these shows that were nitwit shows. So Mm -hmm. why My Mother the Car wouldn't work? Plus, I think it was like produced by Danny Thomas or somebody like that and Sheldon Leonard who had like a a good track record. So they probably just walked in and said, we got a new show we want to give you. It's called My Mother the Car. We'll take it. That sounds like a great idea. Boom. Show goes on the air and everybody says, this is the worst thing we've ever seen. Oh, I'll tell you one of the biggest flops of all time. I was, uh, yeah, I get the, I see Mort Saul every Thursday over in Mill Valley, and yeah. uh, he wrote for. Do you know what show that he wrote for that was one of the biggest flops of all time? Nineteen sixty four. Nineteen sixty four. I can't remember Mort Saul writing for a show, but it had to be something that was like uh, maybe a, a a topical com- comedy show. It was a comedy show slash maybe a little variety. Um, it had a lot of fanfare. It was J- Jerry Lewis. Jerry Lewis? Wasn't he it? Got 30, this is 1964. He got $35 million. Oh, it was the Jerry show. Lewis show, right? Yeah, the Jerry Lewis show. Yeah. Which I think that might have lasted less than My Mother the Car. And more yes. said he never got paid. <laughs> he never got paid? <laughs> no. He worked six weeks on it, never got paid. And but Jerry walked away with thirty five million dollars. I don't know if Jerry got the thirty five million or not. I, I don't know if the contract was I, fulfilled. As I remember though, that show was a complete failure when it went on. Yeah. But Dick then, Cavett was a writer too, I think, on that. Who? Dick Cavett. Dick Cavett. I think though that uh they did bring it back in a different form or something. But I don't. Tried, I, they tried to put, save it, yeah. Yeah, he tried to save it, but uh, it was. You know, one of the biggest failures of all time 
Oh, this is a good one. This one, I bet you don't even remember this one. Uh, Jackie Gleason had just come off the Honeymooners. And they were looking to do something else with, you know, with Jackie Gleason. So he said, well, I'll take the time slot and I'll put a show in there. So they said, fine, here's tons of money. Go do it. Right. And uh, he comes up with a game show called You're in the Picture. And I can't even remember how they heard of that one. I, I, I. I don't know exactly, I can't remember exactly how the game was played or what the premise was, but it was something about uh, putting people in pictures of famous things and you got to figure out what the famous, it, if I can't describe the show to you, you can have an idea of how bad it was as a game show. <laughs> they did one episode and the next week, Jackie Gleason comes back on. And he's sitting at a table. They've, they've got a tape of this. Go go to YouTube. I bet it's on YouTube. Okay. He's sitting there <laughs> at a table with a cup of coffee or maybe it was a drink or something. It was a, something he was drinking out of a cup. Uh, and he looks at the audience and basically says, boy, last week's show was the biggest bomb in the history of television. <laughs> and wow. I, and I'm coming on this week to apologize to you. And that was that was his uh, his mea culpa on this That's horrible amazing. thing that had been done uh, just uh, a week earlier. Uh, so that was that was a, that was a major failure. I'm trying to think of what other major failures there were. There was a show that was so bad that they ran it in the East Coast and it was canceled before it got to the what, West what, Coast. Was that done by the guys who did Laugh In? Slaughter, yeah, it, it, Turn On. It's called Turn On. Yeah. I knew a guy who wrote for it. Now, who did I know that wrote for it that told me the story about it? How he came in the next morning after the show was over, and you could there could have been tumbleweed going through the offices. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I wish I could have seen it. <laughs> I I think it made it to the West Coast. It may not have, but it was canceled after the first night. One night, yeah. And these people, again, you know, from people who had a track record. They over at NBC, they were doing laugh in. And, you know, if you're ABC, wouldn't you like to have the people who do laugh in do a show for you? And so sight unseen, they said, go ahead. And they did a show called Turn On. I'm trying to remember who the writer was, though, that I knew that wrote for it. Uh, I think, jeez, I, I can't remember now. But he used to always tell the stories about how how the next day was just it was it was dreadful. You know, nobody called. Nobody called him to tell him the show had been canceled. So he came to we, work. He I'd like came, to get a. We got to get a copy of that one. I think there are copies of Turn On out there somewhere. Uh, but and I met I met Slaughter once. I did some show he was doing in the comedy boom, and he was an interesting guy. He uh, in the fifties he managed Martin and Lewis. Yeah. So he had some he had some great stories. And then he uh, then he produced the first laugh in a fortune. And then I think he produced t- turn in turn turn on turn on. I think yeah, I think he did. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it was well, wait a minute. Let me let me look here. Here you can. You know, this is a great thing about today. You got IMDb. I used to have a book that had all this stuff, but now you go into IMDb and you simply put in uh, turn on, turn on. and it will tell me nice. everything I wanted to know about. Could turn be on. 19, 1969 or seventy. Well, this is, this is the only titles that I have for Turn On is 2018. That's a show. Uh, it's not a show. Turn On, five titles. Uh, wow, it's not here. Uh, we're remembering the name correctly. You know, so I don't know. I can't, I Maybe can't. it wasn't Turn I thought it was Turn On, but I could be. Uh, G- George Slaughter. Slaughter. How was it? How was that? S C was it S C H S C H A L A T T E R L S C oh S C H S C H L A T T Oh here we go. George Slaughter. Roland Martin's laughing. But what else did he do? What else did he do? Filmography. I don't want filmography. I need uh, uh, a producer. Okay. Um, Rona Martin's Laughing, Shape of Things, Dorothy Share. No, it's not here. 
Maybe he paid somebody oh, minute, to get it off his here resume. It here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Uh, and uh, seasons one and uh, <laughs> episode one. Episodes one. <laughs> and it had, uh, let's see here, Teresa Graves, Bonnie Bolin, Hamilton Camp, Tim Conway. Uh, was there anybody? Ooh. Chuck McCann. I think that's the guy who kept telling me the story about it. Was Chuck? He always used to talk about it. Okay, I think it was on a was it on a Thursday night? Yeah, and let's see here. Full cast. Say, see full cast. Okay, writing credits. Here we go. Maybe, maybe the writer series writing credit. Oh, there was just one person. Wow. Ah, it it, it was a it was a, a gigantic failure. One night, and the year. May as well. 69 or 70, right? 69 or 70. Uh, the year was... Um, hmm. Uh, uh, 1969. Okay. And the, and the episode, since it's only had one episode, was... It doesn't say what the date was on it. But the one episode. That was it. You know. Uh, I'm trying to think. There's another show that, that, that... There were a couple of shows that... Diane Carroll uh, was a black singer actress, right? And uh, she got a deal with NBC to do the Diane Carroll show. Do you remember that? And she, uh, yeah, I think she was 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 she the first she black was the actress first to have black, a show? Black black person to headline a prime time sitcom. Okay, and that thing only lasted a couple of weeks. Because it didn't work, because America wasn't ready for a black lead. Uh, but it wasn't that it was a bad show. That's the terrible part about it. I wish we could say it was a horrible show, so you know, so what if she was black? But no, it happened to be a very good show. Okay. And um, uh, it failed uh, because of that. Um, and we've had, some, we've had some failures recently, but I can't remember what they were. They do. They do like you know. They they come on and they do one episode or two episodes, and then the network just decides we're not going to take a chance on this. Yeah, they can't all think. Yeah, Seinfeld never would have made it. These well, days. well, I was going to bring that up. Seinfeld absolutely wouldn't have made it because Seinfeld uh, was, uh, in, in fact, it may not have even made it out of the uh, testing rooms because supposedly it had the lowest test scores of any show they had ever run in one of these. They have these, like, preview theaters, and they bring people in, and they give them a, a thing to push when they're, when they're laughing and when they like it, and the thing not to push when they don't like it, you know. And then they come out with the score on what people thought of the show. And it was the lowest scoring show in the history of testing. <laughs> Well, if you see those early episodes, they're really bad. Well, they weren't bad. They just were trying to find themselves. But somebody mm -hmm. at NBC, to begin with, nobody remembers, the first season of Seinfeld was only six episodes. Yeah. And the second season was only six episodes. It wasn't until they moved it to Thursday nights in the third season that it started to catch on. And by the fourth season... It was a it was a smash, but it was because somebody at NBC believed in it, and I think that was, Brand, that was Brandon Tartikoff believed in it, and and fought for it and fought to keep it on and believed that it could if it if it got the right time slot, it would work. And what happened is, you know, for those two six uh, night uh, six show uh, program uh, series. Uh, they didn't have confidence. I think that's what they don't. Ha they didn't have. And when they finally got moved to Thursday and they were given a full pickup, they suddenly started, you know, finding themselves and feeling confident about what they were doing. And it, it you know, as it turned out, it then turned out to be what some people say was the greatest sitcom ever. Mm -hmm. And and certainly ratings wise, a killer for the network. Just absolute killer. So um, there's a there's a show that probably today would fail, would absolutely yeah. fail. No no sense of it even even surviving. 
So. And uh, I read also, that I wasn't a huge fan, but Cheers, I think the first season it was on, I think it may have finished last in, out of 83 out of 83 shows. Yeah. And somebody kept that one alive. Well, those were the days when a network honcho would believe in something and stick with it, you know. Uh, and um, it, it, it uh, you know, it, it worked. It absolutely worked. Uh, uh, in a lot of these shows, uh, Seinfeld, but Seinfeld needed time, and um, m- most of these shows needed time. So it, it's uh, you know it it it's a strange business we work in. But I'm trying to think: were there any other failures you can remember? Major failures? The ones we I'm mentioned. I'm trying to think. I, lo- I love the classic failures. Um... Well, it, it, uh, the thing is that what was great about these failures was is that they were monumental. You know, mm-hmm. you today, it, it, if, it, they may be monumental failures, but they're never figured out to be that because they're gone within three weeks and they're just, just shunted to the side. Plus, the reason they went is because they weren't getting ratings. And if you don't get ratings, nobody's watching, then nobody's going to miss it, right? So there's no big yeah. deal out of it. But in those days, it was like turn on when it went on. The network was just going crazy over this thing, you know? I mean, we've got the people who did laugh in now bring you turn on. And the show goes on the first night, and there isn't a laugh in the half hour. <laughs> yeah. So was, I got a good failure for you. Okay. The, um, 1992, the Chevy Chase talk show. Oh, yeah, yeah. But that, that lasted, what, about 13 weeks, something like that? Yeah. <laughs> no, that had a lot of fanfare, and oh, this is going to be huge. How about the Dennis Miller show? A the night- first one, yeah, that didn't uh, last. And that was also 92. It was a nightly show, and after, I think, 13 weeks, they canceled it. But yeah. the good news for Dennis Miller is he walked away with a walkaway fee of $20 million. Really? Yes. Wow. You know, and, and oh, nobody remembers this one. Here, here, here's a here's a failure for you. That was a failure because the talent didn't realize what his talent was. The John Stewart show it was a nightly. Oh, before the Daily Show. Before the Daily Show, nightly show on uh, on uh, 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 syndicated, and I think it only lasted maybe thirteen weeks. And then CBS put uh, Stewart under contract in case Letterman ever left to do that show. It was the Letterman show. But Letterman never left, and he had the contract for a couple of years and was getting paid really good money not to do anything. And uh, finally, he just let it lapse, and he went over and did The Daily Show, which was a roll of the dice. Because you're going, what, you're going over to cable, over to, you know, hardly watched cable network, and he starts The Daily Show, and it's a huge success. So, you know, from failure comes success. And who, uh, and who did he replace in The Daily Show? Uh, he replaced, wait a minute, hold on a second. Uh, I'm trying to remember. It was, uh, oh, God. This is, an- this is another guy that made a bad decision. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, but, and he was supposedly very, very difficult. Was, uh, who was it? Craig Kilborn. Craig Kilborn, right. Who got, his, who got his own talk show and then left that and then disappeared. Yeah. Um, is, uh, Kilborn isn't doing much of anything lately, is he? I never heard of him. No, he had that talk show, and he wanted more money, and he let, they didn't give it to him. And they, he got replaced by uh, Craig Ferguson. Yeah, uh, and Craig Ferguson was doing well for a while, but then, I don't know, he, he, he tapped out, too. I heard that he was, uh, he was steamed that he didn't, he thought he was going to get Letterman's show. And that's why he left. Well, I hear stories, okay, about Craig Kilborn. I don't know it's to true because begin- everything you hear in show well, is usually wrong. Well, the, to begin with, the CBS hated him. They hated him because he was a. Uh, um, there's nothing worse than a uh, reformed drunk. <laughs> you know, there's a certain <laughs> because all the things that made them an alcoholic still exist. Just they're not drinking anymore. They're uh, usually just smoking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
And he supposedly was, they, they did not like him because he was very difficult. And at one point, he said, I want my contract, when we, uh, for contract renewal, I want more money, blah, blah, blah. Okay, fine. Uh, and I want to guarantee that within three years, you'll get rid of Letterman and put me in his place. Kind of like the deal that Conan had. Yeah. And, and uh, they said, are you kidding me? We're going to keep Letterman on there as long as he can possibly keep working. He he makes this network a lot of money. You know, uh, well, I'm better than he is, and he's an old guy, and blah, blah, blah. And he was literally yeah. trying to bully his way into hosting that show. Mm. And, you know, he hadn't done that great with his own that he, he gave it any it gave them any reason to want to do it. You know, so um, he was a very difficult guy. And uh, they got rid of him, and they put in uh, what's his name, um, the James um, Corden. Uh, yeah, you know. Do you realize there are three Jims working late night television? There's Jimmy Kimmel, Fallon, there's uh, Kimmel, yeah, Kimmel you're right. and Fallon. Yeah, uh, your name has to be Jimmy <laughs> in order to get a late night slot on one of the networks. Or J, it's got to start with a J. A J, J, Johnny. Very important. Yeah, there was, the late J, night there was Johnny. Yeah, Jay Leno. They're all Jays. Jack, Jack Parr. J, uh, yes. Uh, 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 let me see here. Well, uh, Buddy Lester wasn't. Uh, that was. <laughs> do you remember? You don't remember Buddy Lester, do you? I don't remember Buddy Lester. That was the original remember. late night show on NBC. It was called Broadway Open House. And it starred Jerry Lester, uh, Jerry Lester, uh, not Buddy Lester, Jerry. and uh, Dagmar, uh, with music by Milton DeLug and his orchestra. And every night they would go on and do the show. And then they stopped doing that, and they got replaced by The Tonight Show with Steve Allen, which mm -hmm. then became a huge success. And then they, they didn't know what to do after Steve Allen left, so they put a show on called America Tonight. And uh, Phil Coates, who was a news guy, was one of the hosts of it. And I can't remember who else was a host. And it was kind of like, it wasn't a news show really, but it was a show with interviews. It was a little more serious than, than Allen was doing. And that wasn't working. And they kept uh, um, just, uh, uh, you know, punting for a while until they found Jack Parr and they put Parr in there and Parr did a couple of years not a lot of years but he did a couple of years and was just a huge success and then they had to find somebody else and they found this guy named Johnny Carson but he couldn't take the job until his contract at ABC was over with so who replaced uh, who replaced Jack Parr taking over the Tonight Show until Johnny Carson could do it Merv Griffin. Ah, I, I Merv, know that. Uh, it's Merv Griffin. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and, and when he didn't get the job permanently, he just went out off and started his own syndicated show for Westinghouse. So uh, it is, it, a lot of history. That late night thing was is rife with history. And then, of course, the whole Conan being put in there, getting rid of Johnny, putting in Conan after three months dumping Conan and putting Jay back in there or something. You know, it's, it's just it's just a mess. Uh, uh, let me see. Jay got it because he pushed out Carson. His manager got Carson pushed out. And then Jay had it for several years, and then they pushed him out because they wanted this young Conan kid to take over. And he did it for three months after they built him a whole studio and everything out at Universal in California. And then uh, 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 Jay, uh, they wanted Jay back again, so they took Jay and put him back again after having him do a five-night-a-week show at 10 o'clock. Do you remember that? Yeah, I remember. And the first night, it got unbelievable ratings, and then it dropped like 90% the next night. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. yeah. It was unbelievable. And, and, and I want to tell you, folks, the reason why... You know, Bubs and I are enjoying talking about failures. Is being <laughs> someone ourselves? Uh, we like to know that other people have had worse gaffes than we. We don't have. want to be alone. You know, we've never seen the big time like that. They no. have, and they failed at it. <laughs> hey, listen, we've run. We, we've run out of time. How about that? 
Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, we'll, we'll do it again next week because I love talking with you. You just because your knowledge of stuff is really vast. Mine's only. Half. I got a little, but not as much as you. That's no, why I like the tab. No. It's like only you would know about this stuff about TV and. Well, no, so most of my I'm I I think my reach is half vast. So anyway, hey, thank you. Talk to you next week. Thanks for having me, buddy. I'm going to do some research on Turn On now. <laughs> This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk radio like you've never heard it before. Okay, everybody, how are you? I'm Alex, and this is the uh, this is the the ramble, and it goes on until uh, the cock crows at midnight. Okay, Eastern time. We're here on the east coast of the United States, and uh, let me open up our Skype line so we can talk to people. Uh, before we go any further, I want to say that it seemed to be a little bit of problems tonight with uh, uh, the uh, video on um, um, on iTunes, or rather on Facebook, uh, working. Let me put on my, this, I like this, okay? Um, but anyway, um, it seems to be working now, actually, but it, it wouldn't hold the signal for a long time. And it might have just been here with me, but uh, in any event, it seems to be working now. So we'll just hope and pray that it keeps on working. All right. Let me open up the uh, Skype lines here. This is how we talk to each other on this program using SKYPE. You go to Skype.com. You download the Skype program, and then uh, you, uh, you know, one of the main things you got to do is, uh, uh, is, is come up with an ID for yourself. Ours is uh, uh, Skype, uh, Skype, GabNet Live. I can't remember any of this stuff now. GabNet Live, and that's our Skype handle. And if you want to call me, you just do what Phil Meyer did. You go to, well, tell them, tell them how to do it, uh, Phil. You uh, know that. Uh, yeah, well, I, I would be able to do it a lot better if I turned off my live feed. Oh, okay, well, uh, let's, there it is. let's go over okay. and see. Uh, oh, uh, that's not what we're going for. Let's see here. Let's go over to uh, Phil, and uh, there we go. There he is. My camera on, yeah. Yeah, but you, yeah, yeah. We need to see you. There we go. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, oh, wait a minute. Uh, Here comes Rob Alfano. Okay. Wow. Well, Which means a, good evening. Uh, huh? uh, let's what? see here. Let's see if your picture comes in, Phil. Now, yes, it does. And Rob, you there? I'm here. Yeah. Turn your camera on. There All we right. go. Now let's see. Let's keep our fingers crossed that we get. There we go. We got both cameras. This is no, but Phil just went <laughs> went black. <laughs> Look, oh, Phil man. went out. Uh, what happened? He, your camera went off. Oh, okay. Uh, let me see what I can do. Yeah, uh, the, it, 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 it's not. Uh, turn it on. I, I I'm trying. I'll have to call back. It's, it's uh, xed out. Why does the that first always one... happen? The first person who calls always gets fucked. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the uh, the world, wonderful world that we're living in with Skype. Hey, as long as I got you here, Rob, how's the boil on the testicle? Uh, it's going away. Really? Yeah. You didn't have the operation away. today. Did not have the operation. It would have been yesterday. I uh, let's went tell, to do Let's this. tell people that, and close your ears if you get squeamish, but he... Uh, <laughs> He had a, uh, a, 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 what do you call it? A cyst. A cyst on his uh, nutsack. Yeah. His gonads. His, yeah. uh, what, 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 what were the couple of uh, terms that were used that British like to use? Uh, but anyway, <laughs> I don't have them right now. And I, I feel that I'm losing it anyway. I, 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 can't, I can't come up with coherent thoughts anymore. Tonight, I couldn't remember... My Apple password. Are you ready for that? Uh, that happens. Right, let's the, hope I didn't screw up everybody else's uh, no, thing. No, no, you're so fine. You're fine. Now let's see you. Oh, uh, I'm not. Uh, okay, because I'm not X'd out. So let's try this. There we go. It's whirling a what round at any moment. There we right. go. See? Hey, it's, it's a wonderful world in Trumpville. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, <laughs> so you didn't go have the operation today. Why? Uh, well, I tried to go Saturday for the uh, pre-op stuff. 
You know, yeah. they got to do the EKG and yeah. take blood. And uh, there's some kind of complication that the place they sent me to said, we will not do it because you have a, a you have a, a, a primary doctor and uh, we won't certify you for surgery. So I said, well, we're not asking that it, the paper clearly says all you need to do is do the tests and then send the results to the surgeons yeah. and they'll do the, the, the certifying. Nope, nope, nope. So I guess it was a blessing because it was getting better. It was, it's been getting better since last Wednesday when it popped. Yeah. And, and so why go through anesthesia? Why go through all that? If, you know, I got an appointment on don't Friday. Don't do that, Phil. That's annoying. Uh, don't interrupt, Rob. That's not nice. <laughs> <laughs> I got an appointment on Friday to have it looked at again, but it, I, it gets, yeah. it's just, I'm still on antibiotics and it's, it'll be fine. It, yeah. I don't, it's going away. Everybody's so ready to want to take a knife to you. For some yeah. Reason. <laughs> You just saved yourself a few bucks, too. Was it going to be a saved great myself. Time? They told me it was going to cost me about uh, $1,000 just for the uh, facility, and then I was going to get billed separately by the doctor, the surgeon, and by the anesthesiologist. Oh, really? So I saved a bunch of money. What did I tell you last week? I said, don't do nothing. It'll fall off by itself. You know? Yeah, and that's kind of what happened. All right, Dr. Phil. <laughs> Dr. Phil. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Phil, my ass. Yeah, well, anyway. You, well, the, the, sur the, the surgeon kept saying, oh, we're really concerned about infection. It could get life-threatening and all this. So. Yeah. yeah, anyway. But there's no infection, and it's healing all rather nicely. By the way, I want to know if people out there are having problems seeing the Facebook video, if it's like suddenly turning off and stuff, because uh, it's been doing it here. But it might just I've got be it right on right in front of me, and it's uh, everything looks good. It's been solid and steady, right? Yeah. Yep. Well, no, but I'm it, seeing you with all kinds of mushy. No, well, face. no, that's on Skype, though. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. you're looking at me at Skype. Skype. I'm talking about the video. Uh, so you looked at the video, Kevin, and it kept it's still uh, running. I'm, I'm looking at Facebook right now on my phone. I got it pushed in front of the monitor yeah, there, yeah, and, and all it, four of us look good. And it's running constantly, and it's not yep. stopping That's or whatever. Okay. Well, you know, who knows what that's all about? It, it Maybe something with a signal I'm getting here or something. Uh, hey. You have anything going on in Thailand? Because I guess in Thailand there's 131 Facebook accounts that the government wants uh, removed. And uh, if, they don't, if Facebook doesn't do that, they're going to shut them down. Why do they want them removed? Because uh, they're uh, anti-government. And there was a coup uh, not too long ago, yeah. and uh, the government doesn't go for that kind of shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I, 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 you can't even get Facebook in China. Yeah. So you know, uh, you know, it would be impossible for me to see this show in China. Hmm. But they could get GapNet, and they could listen to it there. Let me ask you this. You know how uh, some some of you guys use a uh, internet uh, uh, IP that's from another country so you can watch yeah. uh, things? Uh, yeah. Now, uh, why couldn't you do that in China? Because they probably have that stuff blocked. But yeah. <laughs> I, I'm sure they have ways of preventing that. I mean, there are ways that people do watch stuff and you look at Facebook or look at something that is not being... Uh, sent through in China, but uh, I think that the, everybody's pretty wise to that in China, and they know how to, you know, how to ferret that out. Yeah. P plus, I'm on vacation. I don't want to wind up in jail. <laughs> you know. I don't, yeah. If 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 I if not getting Facebook is the one of the only things that I'm going to miss. Then fuck it, I'll miss Facebook for a couple of weeks. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, uh, Sonny Bono, when he was the mayor of uh, Palm Springs, had a very interesting quote. He said, "They come on vacation and they leave on probation." <laughs> I always like that. Yeah. Anyway, I'm yeah. looking to see if anybody's not getting a, a good signal here, and they all. Uh, I see your Facebook feed, and it's clear as day. And it and it, and it keeps going. Mine just keeps petering out for some reason. I have no idea That's, why. Could be your age. No, it could be it could be something <laughs> in the in the area or something something with the bandwidth. Uh, I don't know. Who knows? 
So as long as you guys are getting it, that's all I care. You know, my oh. my needs are simple. All right. Um, but uh, no. So so Facebook, uh, Facebook has problems everywhere. I mean, countries don't like socialized me socialized <coughs> media, social media, because it um, I said socialized social media because it, it, it it's a way that people can rally together and talk with each other and foment revolution i mean the, the arab <coughs> spring was fomented by uh what was it was it twi twitter or facebook I, yeah, I think so. one or the other yeah. yeah so um you know that's that's the reason why and and if they're a totalitarian government they don't want any uh, any problems and they don't want anybody saying that they shouldn't be in power and so they uh, they frown on that kind of <clears throat> kind of social interaction on the internet yeah so, so well, we're so lucky because we can get facebook here aren't we isn't that oh, just, so isn't that the a, a, a end all of freedom the twitter uh, no it's not freedom for me uh I, I, I don't know what it is, but uh, Tony is like a magnet to Facebook. And, and <laughs> I told him, you know, just leave it alone. I'm not changing my opinion on Trump. You know, just <laughs> let it go. <laughs> well, I just tell him, please go. don't message me. Because yeah. he keeps sending me pictures of like Scooby-Doo and shit well, like that. You know, I blocked him the other day and he promised me he wouldn't do he wouldn't send me <laughs> more uh, uh, of those uh, uh, emojis. Yeah, and, 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 and you know something? He's very good about that. He won't. He won't. Yeah. For a while. Yeah, and yeah. then all of a sudden, Scooby Doo will show up in your message. Yeah, well, he's been feeding yeah. in some Scooby Doo, and I threatened blockage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's all right. Well, I, 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 girlfriend made some food the other day, and I threatened blockage. You know, so. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I went to the doctor today. I had a physical. You had your physical. Yeah, you know, he had me uh, take off my shirt and uh, pants, and he looked around for uh, possible, uh, what is it, skin cancers. And I am clear of any skin cancers. Well, isn't uh, that good to know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the nice thing was, I said to him, I said, look, the uh, urologist is not uh, recommending the proton therapy for me, and I'm going to leave the Kaiser system and uh, go to Cigna. He says, well, look, he says, just because one urologist at the Kaiser says no doesn't mean I can't refer you to another one. So he did. And I have an appointment in a week or two with uh, this other one to, to talk about being referred out, and then they'll go to higher and oh, higher good. and higher ups. That's good. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, maybe you can get this a good little news. faster than you expected. Not only faster, but uh, without having to go through any machinations. And you know something? You know, I mean, you, you are within that HMO. And so you feel that urologist is the urologist you've got to use. But, you know, if somebody wants to cut into you, you usually go and get a second opinion. Well and it was it was Jeff's suggestion that uh, you know uh, made me you know think about it and, and talk to the guy today uh, about it because it was Jeff that uh, you know suggested that I try to work the work through their system and see if uh, I can get someone else to refer yeah. and, uh, and may, know, maybe the, that's the what's going to happen. Thank you, Jeff. The doctor's office oh, they have all course. these they have all these uh, wonderful uh, uh, degrees on the wall. But what they should have on the wall was the grades in the various things that they have to know. Like, My doctor I only know, has I, one degree, uh, yeah. and, and it just, it's a sign that says, do not turn above 68 degrees. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> the point I'm making is, is that I, if, it, if I'm going to a doctor, just you know, in general, I'd like to know what particular categories he flunked in. You yeah. know, like failed prostate or, you know, got a yeah. C in prostate, he got an a in tongue depressors or something you know uh i'd like to know what he did well in because let's face it that doctor you're going to the person who is uh has has your <clears throat> life in his hands um yeah. only had to get 70 percent of the questions right well that's one thing i know <laughs> yeah. jeff wants to say something but it's one thing about like a, a kaiser in that they see so many people and they have you know uh, that eventually they know their stuff, whereas if you go to a guy that sees, you know, 25 people a day, uh, you know, he's got his thing. 
But if you see somebody that sees 80 or 100 people a day, uh, you know, they, they have a, a wider background. Well, either that or they're exhausted. Yeah, those guys Nobody young. could see yeah. that many people in a day. Oh, I had a buddy that was a dentist. He used to see a diagnose 100 a day. He was a, you, was a dentist. I, I have a little game. He screwed me up. A day? I have a little game I play with doctors. Yeah. Here, here we go, talking about medicine. Right off the mm -hmm. bat, we're talking about medicine. But you get a bunch of old people together, and they're going to talk about medicine, right? Yeah, don't forget Jeff had his hand up. Yeah, I, I, and I'll go to sure. Jeff in a second. But um, uh, I, I, the thing that it just gets me is that these people today have to see so many people that I swear to you, they don't know who the fuck you are. So what I like to do is I read somewhere that a doctor, on average, only spends seven minutes with a patient. And so I like to see how long I can extend that seven minutes. This guy spent about 40 minutes with me today. After a while, they start getting antsy, you yeah. know. They, they, they go, they oh, do. sit down. I've, I've got all the time in the world now. What's wrong? And then after seven minutes, he starts going, looking at the clock and looking at the, the everything <laughs> else. And, you know, and you're going, he says, is there anything else? And then I start talking very slowly. Well... You know, see if I can get him over the seven minutes. And I've yet to get a doctor over seven minutes. Uh, you know, that doctor is going to have a death panel for you. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. He'll put you on the death panel. Yeah. Just hope. If you can get him to go seven or 15 minutes, you feel like you got your money's worth. Yeah. But I mean, and I understand it, though, because these guys in the old days, if you had like 50 patients, 100 patients in your practice total, that was okay, you know, and maybe you saw five, six people a day, maybe, all right? But all of a sudden, I got a doctor, uh, my, my primary care physician has tw at least 2,500 patients. Oh, the you, guy that had screwed me up was like that. You go in there and you could wait for an hour or two before you even got in. Oh, that, that happens with some doctors, too. They say that, that my, the complaint online about my urologist is that people had to wait long. And I, uh, I, didn't ha I, I never had that experience with him. He sees me I always fast. make the first appointment of the day. When's he yeah. going to get there? First one at 20, I'll take it. Yep. You know? Oh, we don't have it on this day? Well, give it, give it to me on a day he's there and, he's, and I can get it. Yeah. And uh, that's what I do. Well, the only did. reason that I did it is because he was supposedly a good doctor. Because I was going from, well, you probably know where it's at, uh, Phil. I'd go from down, uh, Hollister to downtown Oakland to see this doctor. Wow. And he was guaranteed even at 8 o'clock in the morning it was going to be at least an hour. But it was usually and, two or two and a half hours. And it's a two-hour drive. Yeah, uh, three almost. Yeah, wow. And you had to wait two, two and a half hours? Sometimes yeah, it was a full him? day. Oh. It wasn't it, it, worth it, the result. Well, he was the one that fixed what the other guy screwed up. And the other guy was still the same. He, yeah. you know, he. When I had my surgeries, uh, I think I told you before. It was like when I woke up, I thought I was in a mash unit. People were in chairs, on tables, uh, walking around. It was like thirty people there, and, and he still had some more to go. Wow. He was just cranking them out. Yeah, my my video stopped again. Yeah, it did. Uh, it, 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 it's frozen on Facebook. Oh, it's frozen on Facebook? Oh, yeah, uh, it is. Uh, well, somebody will go to the Facebook Charlene page. wrote that yeah. uh, it's stopping and starting. A lot, yeah. I have no idea. Trying mm -hmm. to watch you on Facebook cuts out the feed oh, after did. a few minutes. Oh, you know what? It could you hit be... the play button, it'll go back on. Yeah. Well, uh, all I did on, on my iPad is just hit the screen, and it went back on. So yeah. maybe it's like a screensaver, and it just no, stops. After. No, no. There's something wrong with the feed tonight. But if, mm. if people are having trouble with it, just go over to gabnet.net and listen to the audio. And if you want to see the video later, I'll put it up mm. in this place here, you know. Mm. Uh, so, you know, just that's my, that's my advice, okay? Mm. Um, because I, I can't... Uh, 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 for some reason, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see if it plays back a a after we do this because, you know, it saves it and plays it. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, I'm recording the thing, so we'll have a, a, a full version of it. I'm just sorry tonight if that's if you're having some trouble with it. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll figure out what's wrong later on, you know. Um, 
But uh, let me see here. Maybe, maybe, maybe I know what. The, well, this might be a problem. Hold on a second. Let me get rid of the old show from Friday, and see if uh, if it uh, if it has a problem now. I don't know. Anyway, uh, what was I going to say? So, um, so we always seem to wind up talking about medicine. Oh, yes. Why is that? Yes, Jeff. Well, it's it's you know the biggest people say it's the largest part of our whole economy these days and that that is and people are spending their money on doctors on drugs and therapy and physical therapy and all that stuff but the, the reason I kind of stuck my hand out before was because uh, you're talking about these doctors and how good are they and how bad are they uh, and I don't know how far this is but in Connecticut, they have a system where the doctors have to be recertified. And I knew the guy who started that program at Yale. Mm -hmm. He used to be my doctor. He was pretty good. He died, yeah, that, unfortunately. But um, and they gave him a real extensive uh, current test. Mm -hmm. Of what the modern approach might be, yeah, and like what are the drugs that changed, what are the physical characters that have changed, and what kind of protocols that they used to use and now use, you know, all those kind of things that would kind of revalidate that that your doctor, even though he graduated ten years ago, is he still update and good? Yeah, yeah, that's a nice program. Yeah, I don't know if they do it all over the United States. Where they not. keep testing doctors to see if they're up on the latest stuff. Yeah, most doctors, if they're good doctors, do go yeah. in at least a couple once every year or two to get up to date on everything. You know, so that and, and if they if they're a good doctor, they also read the periodicals. You know, the yeah. uh, the medical periodicals and see what's happening, what the latest yeah. thinking is on stuff. Um. But the problem that you have out there is there's no way to tell one doctor from another and whether that doctor is the doctor who keeps up on the stuff or that's the doctor who's just open for business, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I, and it, lately my biggest problem with doctors that I've had is, is them just being there for me, remembering maybe somehow who I am, you know? Like I talk about the doctor of mine who uh, I'm probably going to get rid of because uh, a month earlier he had sent me a script and said in about three months, go back and go get your cholesterol checked again. Okay? And I said, fine. And he sent it to me and I got it and I put it away. Then all of a sudden I get a letter from him saying, oh, by the way, your, your, your uh, figures on cholesterol were terrible and maybe you also had a little blood in your urine and you know, you should check your liver or whatever. And and I I went, wait a minute, we talked already. He sent me something. He should remember he sent me something. That I told him I don't need the, the, the blood in the urine thing checked because I've talked to my urologist about it and I've had it for 15 years. So that's the key word. You told him. I remember that you had said uh, he, I, that, he wrote, hey, you he, know, why we do the test right away? You know, we're, uh, you're giving me this additional medicine. Why don't we wait three months? Yeah. That was your suggestion, not right. his. And, and he agreed. Well, I guess not. Well, no, he did. No, he did agree. He <laughs> just, what had probably happened is he was sitting there one day and he saw my thing, my, my blood test, and he looked at what he had circled and he went, oh, I better send him a script to go have it redone. And I'm oh. going... He doesn't even remember, you know. Well, he does. He said, hey, if they do these three, I get a 1000 bucks." No, do, do, you, do you know how much they charge? I looked at my Medicare thing, yeah. um, what stuff costs. Mm -hmm. Do you know how much it costs, the blood panel that you get? No. A $1,000. All right. Everything's $1,000. Did you ever think the Rob's blood tests were $1,000? I didn't. I thought they were like, you know. 50 Free. cents, you know, <laughs> or they sent them off to blood, blood tests or us. No. And I, and I checked my Medicare for the last 10 years and the price used to be 500 and mm -hmm. 200 and 300, but now it's a thousand. Thank you, Obamacare. 
No, it isn't. A, that's, that's what Obamacare was trying to prevent on some level, and it didn't work. Yeah. Well, medicine's yeah. kind of become uh, your own maintenance with assistance. Well, you know, uh, uh, you go. You know, you gotta you gotta know all this stuff yourself, and help him along. He can give you the, the prescriptions. He can, you know, do the cultures. But you gotta help him along. That's it's it's not like before where they knocked on the door and they knew who you were, and here's what we're here for. You know, you're going in there, and it, I found that out over going through what I well, went through. Well, I've had this. Uh, you know, I had this uh, uh, torn meniscus, which is really not fun. I mean, still. Of course, still bothering me, uh, and I'm going to physical therapy once a week and everything. And uh, this guy, the, my physical therapist, told me about a thing called uh, Volterran gel. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that it's a gel you kind of put on. He had some, and he put it on my my knee, and for a while it made it feel better. You know, I got the cream. so he, he, he said, you should call your doctor and see if he can get some of this. And I left his office and I'm at home one day and I said, by the way, to the girlfriend, what's that that tube of stuff you had that you said, you know, helps relieve pain? And she held it out. And it was the same stuff. It was Voltaren. Mm -hmm. So the next week I went to my uh, to my physical therapist and I said, I got to get some of this stuff. And he said, well, t you can call your doctor. And I said. Do you have any doctors here? Because it's like a sports medicine place. And she, he said, "Yeah." And I said, "Make, can you get me an appointment with her, with 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 them right now?" And he said, "Yeah, I think so." You know, so I so because I wanted to get a prescription for Voltaren, mm -hmm. so I went into the doctor and she asked me a bunch of questions and she felt the knee and you know the whole thing. She said, you know, maybe if you come back in about two weeks, she says, we might give you a shot in there that might help you a little bit. Cortisone? Cortisone, yeah. That only and, lasts and, a few months. I, well, no, I had cortisone in my hand, and it, to this day, the, it hasn't come back. Really? Yeah. Uh, but anyway, and even if it works for two months, at least I'm not going to have the pain, right? But anyway. But you can injure yourself. But she, she checked me out, and I said, this doctor's better than the one I was going to. He's mine's a really old guy who's about ready to retire anyway. He's my age, mm -hmm. you know. And um, yes, I called his office to see if I could get some of this, and he'll, he'll we'll get he'll get back to you. And finally, this morning, the secretary got a hold of me, and I said I don't need it now. But anyway, so she gives me a prescription for Voltaren. She calls it into my. Uh, pharmacy i go to the pharmacy a couple hours later and i go up and they say okay your name blah 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 and i said uh, they said oh voltaren oh you can't get this until your uh your your doctor asks for a, a pre-authorization i went the only time i've ever had to get pre-authorization was like for cialis which is like 175 dollars or uh that stuff, you know, that stomach medicine I was telling you about for the IBS, you have to get pre-authorized for that because it's 2000 You have to get it pre-authorized. But why does this stuff need pre-authorization? So now I call her, and she was really good. By the next morning, she had gotten it pre-authorized. She, you know, and she wrote me and said, I'm, they're going to give me a hard time. But I guess they didn't. And so I went back today, and look what I got. You know, yeah. I got I got the uh, for the people who are watching me on the TV. Oh, I think I have some of that. Oh, really? yeah, I got that stuff in the if, cream form. If yeah, you pull is, that label a, off, it says KY underneath. This is yeah. here. <laughs> there we it off the there shelf. We go. That's for people to see, mm. right? Yeah. I've got that. You've got, got that? that too. That's yeah, I use it occasionally. It's Wait very a minute. Good. You all have it. Yeah. Yep. Did you have to get it pre-authorized? No. <laughs> Not at that time, no. I got it I by the sa satchel full. What do you yeah. mean by the satchel full? I'm talking about, I can't tell you how many tubes of that I was given. Because yeah. I have, uh, yeah, because I have uh, Achilles tendon problems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they, the guy just like, I can't tell you, I got a big, <clears throat> huge white bag full of those tubes. Really? Yeah. Huh. So was that invented? Because he didn't want to go through the authorization. Oh, by the way, I I, I think it costs a hundred dollars a tube here. Uh, wow. it, it, and in in Europe, it's five dollars a tube. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. five dollars a tube. 
So do, do you have to have like a little plastic strip that you put it on and then yeah, there's press a little, it on with you? Well, there's that's a plastic. 20 that's so you can, you can do the right dosage for it. it it's, right. a, it's a little, wait a minute, hold on a second. I have it here. Hold on. Uh, <coughs> where do they do it? Oh, here it is. Here it is. This is this is what you're. Wait a minute. Let me put my earphones on again. Um, this is what you're talking about. This is the uh, this is the strip. Uh, yep. Yeah. And Same it, thing. What it is is it um, it has. Oh a, wow! You're pregnant. Yeah, right. No, what it does is, is it has a little, I'd use about half of it, and you just take it and squeeze the stuff out on here, and then use this as the applicator, you know. And you uh, don't get any on your hands. And then you, well, then you rub it in with your hands. But uh, uh, that's the right dosage. And I asked her if she can give me refills, and she said, well, I won't give you a refill till we try this for a couple of weeks and see how it works. <laughs> Uh, and, I would send you all mine if I had realized. I threw it all out recently. Oh, huh. oh, oh. <laughs> damn it, damn it! But it, but the, that my sister's a nurse. But nurse. I mean, and it it's it doesn't solve the problem, but it makes it mitigates it. It makes me it makes it feel better, okay? And uh, uh, so uh, you know, uh, so I have myself a new um, uh, a doctor for my Great. sports medicine, and she's young and she's hungry and i think she needs the business and she's she was nice enough you know but again you don't know whether she's any good you just have to assume that your relationship to her she treats you well she treats you nicely uh and uh that's really what matters the most so is this doctor you getting rid of the card cardiologist or uh no 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 this is this is another sports medicine guy uh, uh but i haven't i only had one visit with him I, uh, I years ago I went to his son who did the shot for my kind of arthritis in here mm -hmm. in my hand, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, that was it, you know. But you know, so um, uh, but uh, no, the the cardiologist I'm thinking of getting rid of because I I I'm on a doctor who I at least pretends like they remember, you know, who pretends like they they you know that I'm not just another number. And and I don't know if that's possible today. I think it is. I think it's like yeah. you gotta you gotta buy a car, you gotta buy somebody who's gonna work on your house. You gotta get somebody to interview a people. You gotta and and you gotta well, say I yes have, and no. I have another and doctor. Fire I have another doctor who was actually I was first went to when I went to my current uh, primary physician, uh, who was his partner, and she left and went to mount sinai and she's practicing over there and i'm thinking of going there because you know how many thousands of people does she need to get she probably just gets paid a fee by mount sinai to you know to practice there and uh you know i don't think she has to sit there and have 2500 patients in order to make ends meet as it were so here comes brian hello brian hello how are you not too bad. You hear what we're talking about again? Doesn't matter to you, does it, Brian? I you... just dropped in. Oh, oh, I see. <laughs> you just dropped in. Um, by the did you way, hear from? Did uh, you hear from Patrick, Alex? Yeah, I heard from Patrick. He's still having trouble with uh, uh, catheters. With uh, catheters, uh, uh. but uh, he, he's um, he's going to uh, be better. He says it's, it's nothing to worry about. It's just. He's just have been having trouble with it leaking or something. I haven't been able to get it straight. Mm -hmm. But uh, I tell him he's missed, you know, mm -hmm. and that uh, uh, soon, uh, but I don't wanna, want him to sit around and be fidgety because his catheter isn't incorrectly or whatever. <laughs> Boy, what are we talking about here, folks? You know, I was talking to a girlfriend tonight, and I said, you know, I'm really bothered by the fact that the next big event in my life is dying. <coughs> You know, and that I have a great fear of death, and I don't want to die, and uh, that day is coming. It may, may, who knows? I may live to be a hundred, but that would be terrible too. You know, I mean, you ever see they have the they had this thing? Of what? Where was it? Where? Oh, Japan! They have a life expectancy higher than any other country in the world, and it's not unusual for someone to live to be over a hundred. Mm. 
and they and this woman was 103 and they paraded her through the streets and everybody was cheering her as she went by because she was 103 then she died no she didn't die <laughs> she, um and um so uh I, it, this country does not have that same survival rate we have a very bad survival rate i was reading a survival rate today on women who die from childbirth that in this country it's higher than most countries <coughs> anywhere in the world and you would think you know in outer slobovia somewhere everybody dies when they have a kid you know but no we have one of the worst rates of uh of uh mortality when it comes to to giving birth to kids so yeah they just die literally not figuratively like most of us do mm -hmm. so let's talk about the elephant in the room i Today, I broke my rule. I started watching television news. I, here's how I watch it now. I've learned I can still escape the evils of it by, on the hour, going to each of these networks. Um, going to each of these networks. Oh, here comes James Lee from Hawaii. Um, uh, by going to, listening to each of these networks for like the first five minutes of the hour, because then they're just reporting the news, okay? Here's what happened today. Here's what so-and-so said, and then I can sit around and be my own pundit. Hi, James. How you doing? Hi. Yeah. So anyway, so I, I started watching the news because uh, something Rob did. He sent me a note yesterday. He says, you must hate being off the air today because of all the news that's happening. And I said to myself, I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> I thought the same thing, too. Yeah. So, so I, uh, I decided that I had better do something about it. And uh, uh, heaven knows, uh, I started watching some of this news. Uh, this is getting pretty damn bad. And I, I don't know. Ugly. How, I, ugly. I don't know how Phil's going to excuse this. But, oh, uh, my, our Republican-minded uh, 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 talk show host on KDKA found many ways in which, with which to uh, brush it aside and oh, brush you know, aside. mouthpiece. Well, that, that that was funny because what you were talking about, Alex, I would I would listen to you know breaking news. It was like three of them today. <laughs> yeah, and I go breaking news. I go okay. I'm going to go to CNN and see what they say. Then I jump over to Fox and see what they say. And, oh, my God, you can just tell the difference. It was hilarious. Yeah, but in the first five minutes of the hour, they don't normally parse the news. They just report it. So right. then, then you're home free. Once they start putting the pundits on, forget the, it. Go, go running the for the bullshit. hills. What? Anyway, I go into the bullshit because, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm a... I'm a glutton to watch well, a train wreck. What I my day, too, my day started, started off, I love train wrecks. <laughs> I, I, I my day started off with me turning on the view, and they were running a clip that MSNBC had put together of Trump when he was running for office and all his comments about Hillary Clinton and how she yeah. can't be trusted with government secrets. Yeah. And if it says in one one clip, he says if it says confidential, that's what it means. Yeah. And it, it just it, and I'm telling C you, it was something CNN like one with like 20 different clips of him giving this confidentiality speech, and uh, all of a sudden here he's he's breaking that very rule. Yeah, why it was am I, uh, why MSNBC. Am I, I think they did a they did a clip of how many times McMaster, McMaster mm -hmm. said holy, what was it holy. Uh, allowable or whatever the hell he said that was okay for um, what he said during that conversation. And they played it like eight times in a row. <laughs> well, yeah, but tonight's just... news tonight's news is really the better news. Yeah. Which which news is that? The memo. Oh, the, the memo, memo, the Comey memos. The Comey memos, yes. Yeah. Supposedly Comey. That's impeachable. Huh? That's impeachable. That's obstruction. <laughs> No, it's not. Well, wait a minute. Yes, no, no, it is. Hold on a second, Phil. Let me let me let let, let Rob get his piece in here. Uh, Comey supposedly, in case people aren't aware of the fact, Comey uh, wrote memos every time he met with Trump. Right. And all the and things they're he, saying there may be recordings of some of those meetings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and Comey has said he wants those. You know, wants to hear those. You well, know. The Senate's calling for him. Yeah. Yep. 
So it's it's getting pretty. This is this is the Nixon esque. Huh? I heard it's... this morning they're thinking about bringing RICO charges on the entire Republican Party. <laughs> 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 oh, holy Christ! Uh, Better duck, Phil. They should you... do that with some of the establishment. How are you too, feeling huh? about this out there in Hawaii, I'm James up the Lee? There because I'm not. Well, well I... you know, what? folks out out here, you know, we what happens in D.C. is pretty far away from us. You know, we care about what's happening with North Korea, South yeah. Korea. And, of course, the uh, Navy is deploying the attack sub Illinois into Pearl Harbor. That will be our sixth attack sub, and we're looking forward to that one because that's a 1,000 new Navy personnel coming in to Hawaii, and that's outside money the state needs. Because any time they deploy a, 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 a sub or, a, or any type of a vessel, uh, it brings the crew, the support crew, and the staff and the families, and it's the, it's the money for the economy, whether it's for the restaurants, the insurance, you mm -hmm. name it. Yeah. Because uh, we, we depend on the outside military to, to support us. Because as I said to you gentlemen before, on this whole island, the total population is only 200,000. You know, San Francisco's got over a million people. That's one city. And yet we've got 15 high schools on this island. We can't support that. We need outside tourists and outside money to run this place. Yeah. That's why we need 800,000 tourists every month to support the economy of our state. Otherwise, we go bankrupt. But you said it was Pearl Harbor. That's on Oahu. How does yeah, that affect the, your the money's are shared, you know. Everything's oh. run by the state out here. You know, counties don't have the, the flexibility like you guys have on the mainland. Oh. Everything is state run. Sure, there is a county, but it's uh, whether it be the, the civil service system, or everything, it's all relied out of headquarters, Honolulu. Hmm. Uh, you know, it's it's you know, remember, this goes back to when we were a territory before statehood in the 1960s. Yeah, and but they will still remember this, you know. If Navy personnel goes into the uh, McDonald's uh, on Oahu, how does that benefit uh, your uh, your island, which is you know? Well, they, there's a four percent sales tax right there off the food. Yeah, that's shared. There's also a uh, GED tax uh, that's also taken off from the vendors, and that's shared by the counties. I see. Uh, you see, uh, property taxes are are non-existent. For example, they're only out of a population of 200,000, there are only about 145,000 taxable properties on this island, including land, buildings, or residents. And yet, there are over 35,000 of these properties, the people pay less than $100 property tax for the whole year. Is that because some properties are <laughs> fee-based, where you don't own the land, you only own the... Uh, no, you that's, have no, that, you no these are the people who own it. I mean... They, they may be very well, rather low income, get the tax. They've, got, they've got the land that's been willed in the family, you know, half an acre here, half an acre there. Sure, they're on supplemental security income, but they only pay $100 a year property tax. And I will admit, the house that's on top of it may not even have plumbing, you know, yeah. uh, because it, it's, it's, it's a different subculture, literally. Wow. Let's get back to the uh, let's get back. Let's <laughs> okay. get let's get back to the, back the story. Sorry there. To interrupt. <laughs> there are people, Phil. Who are saying, and and this is not just you know your your people who are hopeful. Okay, uh, this includes uh, Republicans, it includes Democrats, who think these Comey memos could be the the thing that will get Trump impeached. That, you can. The, uh, now, what, can what, I, they're they're saying these Comey memos, and Comey has been smart enough that he's taken the memos. And given them to other people because he doesn't want the government to be able to sit on them. Okay? Okay. Uh, can I answer this and, and you're not going to interrupt me? Well, how long are you going to keep going? Not long. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whenever I start to make a point, uh, you like to interrupt. So, mm. uh, The memo said, I hope you can let, uh, that's, the memo said that Trump said, I hope you can let this go, Trump said to Comey. Trump never said to Comey, don't investigate. He didn't do wait, wait, anything wait, wait, to obstruct. Can I ask you a question? I, I, I'm going to okay. interrupt because you're wrong. You're wrong in, your, in what you're – no. I wrote it down. No, I know you wrote it down, but you wrote CBS it down wrong. Tonight. What, was no, he, what, 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 what was he referring to? And he, he was referring to the conversation he had with Trump when Trump, when the news media is saying that Trump no, 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 tried no, to no, interfere no, 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 wait, with wait, Comey's hold on a second. investigation no, no, he, of, of – uh, of um, the what's his General. name? There General. now you go. That's different. Different than oh. what you said. You you kind of said 
that he was saying these things in general. You know, he, no, this no, was no, in no, a no. conversation about uh, what's his name? He was talking name? about Flynn. Flynn. Okay, and he mm -hmm. says, hey, I hope you can let this go. It, it had not, he didn't say, don't investigate. He didn't do anything that would uh, indicate an obstruction of justice. And um, Hey, if the boss calls you into the hmm. office and says, I hope you can let this go. And then he uh, fires uh, him, and he says why he fired but him. But that was in February that they had that conversation. He got fired in May. That doesn't so, matter. Well, he, he was only president for a month or less than a month. When uh, when this conversation took place, and they had no idea whether uh, Flynn was guilty at that time. Matter of fact, they they uh, they didn't fire Flynn until uh, he was caught lying to Pence. Uh, now there was one other thing that uh, there was a conversation with, and it was uh, uh, whether or not the information that Trump shared with the Russians. Uh, was uh, you know a uh, a violation of uh, of the trust of the Israelis as well as uh, giving up uh, classified information. Well, first of all, he's allowed to do that. Second of all, because uh, he can declassify anything he wants to. But uh, right now we're fighting ISIS, and the Russians are fighting ISIS, and to share this kind of uh, information with an ally, basically, who's looking to fight the same battle, I don't see anything wrong with it. And uh, I think the media and uh, and everybody else is trumping things up. Phil, trying to, Phil, uh, Israeli is, Israel is pissed. They, they may be pissed Wait a minute, let me finish. Let me finish. Ram. Let me finish. Now, I let you talk. Let me finish. Israel is pissed. I would say that what he did whether he had the right to do it or not to do it, was ill-advised because of the blowback that he's going to get from every nation in the world who is not going to want to give us confidential information anymore. Well, you, you know, point. no, and, and, uh, you know, if, if he could save lives by making them aware that there's an imminent threat of these uh, laptop bombs, and that's why, uh, what's his name? In, I knew in, there were uh, imminent threats from laptop bombs a half a year ago. Right. And well, and, and so this is the information that he shared with them. Now, you don't, you don't and, know all the what, information what, he shared with them. What he, what he was told was some confidential information by the Israelis. This is the information he gave to the Russians. This is going to make it so that the Israelis will never give us another piece of information. And he's putting our lives in jeopardy by not allowing him have to have access to information which countries otherwise would give him. Would you agree I, with I me? I seriously doubt that. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. And just remember, okay. the information that we got from the Israelis uh, uh, when it came to the uh, uh, a, uh, M MDs in, in Iran uh, or Iraq, uh, the WMDs, that was Israeli information. It was Israeli information. Oh, now about the Israelis the are, are bad guys now? No, I don't think the Israelis are bad guys, but it was bad information. And so, uh, but... Trump and the sharing. Russians are going to give us good information? Look. Uh, maybe uh, it's time that uh, we started sharing some of those things Let's in our fight it. against Not ISIS. Not only Democrats, but Republicans feel very uncomfortable with what went on with the Russians. But they Rob, may feel uncomfortable. Rob, Rob what, do you, right what, do you, what, what do you think, Rob? Does, does this put us in jeopardy with other, other nations and being able Absolutely. to exchange information? He Absolutely. He speaks off the cuff. He, he, there's no thought process behind when he gives out information or what information he gives out. He just goes off script. He brags. He's bragging. Oh, I've got intelligence. You should see the intelligence I got. You could just hear Trump saying this. You know why I don't agree? <laughs> uh, uh, just can I interject? Because I don't Trump agree supporter? because... Uh, uh, he didn't let the press, the American press, into that meeting. Yeah, I, why? In, because he intentionally d uh, wanted to On give that information to to the Russians. So I think it was premeditated, okay. at, and he did think it through, and he intentionally wanted to give that information, and that's why the American press was kept away. And that's why, and that's why people in that meeting leaked it because they felt that the president did something he shouldn't have done, and they felt uncomfortable with it. 
They're leaking it because these are Obama operatives that are looking to undermine Trump at every step. Oh, Jesus. okay, there you go. Conspiracy there are very theory. few yeah. of those people left, and they're not that close to the, to the Oval Office. The pe only people in the Oval Office during this were about four, um, uh, four individuals who are part of the administration. So how did it get leaked? Well, maybe one of them doesn't like Trump that much. A lot of them are afraid do you understand that the, we're talking about our republic here mm -hmm. and you got this guy going off half cocked on everything without really being prepped on anything. He can't stick to a script. People are afraid. People my, are afraid the, for this republic. Mark, mark my words, okay? The Comey memos are going to be a mm -hmm. yep. bomb that is not going to stop exploding in Trump's face. And, and he, it, it is going to wind up, it is going to wind up in at least an impeachment. Yep. I doubt it. And that's what, and all of the people will in the you, State will Department. You, will you sit here and eat your words if it doesn't happen? Absolutely. Really if it does happen. Run. Yeah. He's I, running I, the I, country it, like a corporation, and it's not a fucking corporation. Right. It's if a right. damn if it government. winds up in an impeachment and he's impeached, I will eat my words. If you don't like me, I'm going to fire you. I'll find a way to get rid of you. <clears throat> it's a fucking corporation, and he's good at that. And you can yeah. tell. The shit that he's saying now, it's coming out. I mean, it looks... The, I mean, Jimmy Kimmel had a funny line. He refers to the Trump administration as uh, the apprentice, too. You know, <laughs> that, that he's running it like the apprentice. You're fired. You know, yeah. to begin with, to begin with, you don't fire Comey. He had the job for ten years. The reason the job was given to a uh, to him for ten years and to anybody in that position is so they could be independent and not have to worry about political blowback making them lose their job. But the only person who could get rid of the head of the FBI is the president of the United States, and he got rid of him for all the wrong reasons. He didn't get he rid, got of rid of him for he, you guys. No, no, he got rid of him because Bullshit. of the. Yeah, you believe email that? scandal. Yeah. You yeah. believe that. You really believe you that. You don't believe that, Phil. Really. Hey, you can you you it, don't believe it, though. You don't believe that when Comey said that stuff about Hillary, he wasn't sitting there doing this, you know. And of course he was. But, you know, uh in case people couldn't see that, I'll do that full words. screen. Yeah, yeah, his yeah. actions yeah. speak louder than hired the guy who was who he didn't like that was investigating him. Yeah, he didn't but like the way the investigation was yeah. going. But every Brilliant. Democrat, every Democrat in the world would want Comey uh, to Phil, have been fired Phil, on Phil. October twenty eighth. Something about that's correct. It just but admit once, that once something about this smells fishy. You're right, Phil. People wanted him fired, but not once he's investigating the president. Do you understand? It's not so much about Comey being fired. It's the surrounding events. The fact that the man – could you imagine if you were being investigated by the IRS and you can fire the guy who was investigating you? Yeah, just – huh? <laughs> it doesn't, it pretty doesn't, nice. it doesn't it pass, Phil, it it doesn't pass the stink test. It doesn't. But this guy Rosencrantz or whatever his uh, his deputy is and Gildenstern, yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, that guy. Uh, Brian says, got it. Brian's Brian, educated. Give us a name. <laughs> give us a name. <laughs> uh, what, what would you call it? Rosencrantz Brian. and Gildenstern. Oh, uh, what is that? <laughs> what is Shakespeare? That? Oh, Brian will okay. come up with one in a few minutes. Yeah. What 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 what? what, what uh, Brian, do you know what Shakespeare play that's from? Rosencrantz, isn't it? I think it's Hamlet. Yeah. Yeah, they're two little they wacky guys be. that show up in the play. Something yeah. is rotten in the state. Oh, well, there's two two quotations that come to my mind regarding that in <laughs> juxtaposition to uh, this administration. Uh, one is something is rotten in the state of Denmark, yeah, and the yeah. other is with the uh, and it dovetails with something else I wanted to break into <laughs> earlier. Um, me think the lady doth protest too much, and uh, also in in that. That uh, I, I don't know if it was Hitler or if it was somebody in the in in, in his regime in the Nazi regime that uh, basically said, um, and I'm paraphrasing, uh, those those who uh, uh, who who make claims or or, or or who make claims about the enemy or the adversary are guilty of it themselves. Yeah. yeah. Listen to what Brian, they, very they, good. They very good, Brian. Didn't yeah, know you were that like educated. Yeah, I, 
Yeah, That's which it. one is uh, out vile jelly from? Out vile jelly? This yeah, when he good. sticks his finger in the guy's eye and uh, he says out vile jelly. Uh, King Lear, I think. By the way, I saw, just to, uh, to get off of this for a second, uh, did anybody see uh, King Richard, the th uh, King Charles III? No. This was on PBS on Sunday, and it was an hour and a half play done in free verse like Shakespeare. And it is about uh, Queen Elizabeth dies, Charles ascends to the throne, and now everybody wants to get rid of him, including his sons. And it's very Shakespearean. He occasionally he sees the visage of Diana, you know, oh, and things like that. And, and and it's all done in free verse, so it sounds Shakespearean. And it was just wonderful. If you get to see it, if you can, if you get PBS uh, app and you can watch mm -hmm. it there. It was a graphic get... novel or a series of comics that were released uh, under uh, the title "Kill Shakespeare," and it was a. a a, a take on uh, uh, the bard and his uh, creations, basically coming yeah. to life, and you know, <laughs> people that were uh, that were the good guys yeah. were uh, you know protecting him, yeah. and the ones the Yuri Yagos and your uh, you know it's funny I remember but, the villains more than I do the good guys, but I, but, uh, I, I just they're find, all out yeah. to I kill. find it uh, really weird and 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 uh, disgusting. That the president of the United States, when he was running for president, talked about confidential information over and over again. That Hillary couldn't be trusted with confidential information. And here, and no matter what you think, Phil, this stuff was considered confidential. The fact that he says, well, I'm president, I can say it's not confidential now. Doesn't mean that That's it is. That's even it, scarier. It, it that should, is right. It, <laughs> yeah, it, that is scarier. And it, that it. It shouldn't. It's it's. He it's gave it to behavior. an ally in the fight against ISIS. Wait, 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 wait to be no one with, but you and Trump think thinks that, of the, so, the so, thinks of Russia as an ally. The, an ally. <laughs> an ally doesn't. An ally doesn't uh, fix your elections. An yeah, ally doesn't spy an on you. An ally. We extend the olive branch. Sure. After they've uh, after they've uh, hacked our elections, that's down the road. Right here. Do you really news. think? Do you really think that uh, they're uh, Putin, laughing at us? That Phil. Vlad, they the, are the, laughing the, at the, us. Vlad the Impaler uh, is 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 a trustworthy <laughs> person, and that he's a trustworthy uh, 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 kin to us. No. Possibly, no. but we don't know unless you try. You know, you, oh. you just can't go oh. ahead and change oh. policy yeah. like that because you got to worry about what your allies think. Well, the you can't just go ahead and, and turn on a dime in yeah, this Yeah, but it's world. America first, remember? Yeah, sure. It, well, uh, we'll okay, and we'll okay. be alone. Yeah, yes, yeah. James. Uh, uh, sorry, gentlemen. I'm well, going to have to be going on. I've been picking uh, something called lychee fruit over here in Hawaii. Ah. So my wife, I need to sort these out. You know, these oh, things taste oh, like fruit oh, cocktails. Those are leech, leachy nuts. Yeah. Leachy nuts. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. They kind of taste like sweet fruit cocktails. It's a deal out here in the tropics. You guys don't have it on the mainland. Yeah. So anyway, I'll wish you all, Mr. Brian, Mr. Jeff, Mr. Rob, Mr. Phil, Mr. Kevin, of course, uh, everybody else. Uh, and Gabnet. Yeah. And aloha. We'll okay. catch you guys a little bit aloha. later down the road. Okay? Aloha. Thank yeah. you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, somebody wrote here, Phil, Trump promised you... Uh, hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. See, what's this? Uh, Abby Murray writes, Phil, Trump promised you he would have Hillary in jail. Now you're saying he got rid of Comey to help mm -hmm. us, the Democrats. Yeah. Uh, that should it's fucking fun. piss you off. Uh, you know, they take things too literally. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. Uh, well, not, maybe not you because you're Jewish, but I'm I, I the want, fundy fuckers that support. Yeah, I, Trump I just, I just, talk I, about I, I, I don't want Hillary I, to go to jail. You know something? You, you, you know, Trump was very right when he said he could kill somebody in broad daylight, yeah. and everybody would let him get away with it. I honestly believe you would have an excuse for him, Phil. Probably you could declassify it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, I, you know, I mean, I, uh, I want to tell you I, on this see, show, on this need, show, it's not your solemn duty to defend this piece I of work. I don't need an excuse to defend him because you guys take this stuff out of context 
And yeah, Bill, wait, what, what and do Bill, we take? Convict, what, tell us what we think someone in the eyes of the media. Bill, no, one tenth of this information had been about Hillary or any Obama or any Democratic candidate or president. You would be livid about it. Let me one put, yeah. tenth of it. If anybody, hey. wait a minute. If anybody had the impetus to fire Comey, it was Barack Obama. When the whole yeah. Hillary thing happened, he had yeah, every absolutely. reason he could have taken the incentive <clears throat> and fired him on the spot. And you would have given us such shit for that, that it would it's be impossible. Y- yes. You would have given us <laughs> such crap. Oh, look, Obama's going around the Constitution. He's getting rid of a guy who should have the job for 10 years. And what was the reason that uh, that Trump, one of the reasons Trump gave, because he changes his reasons every day was that because of the Hillary thing that he wanted to get rid of him. Well, if if uh, Obama had gotten rid of him because of the Hillary thing, we wouldn't hear the end of it. Well, but you see that's uh, the reason why I think he's the why conversely uh, I think that people like Obama and Hillary are the most chicken shit worthless politicians there are. They're probably even worse than Trump in that in in, yes. in that regard because well, yeah, we, I don't disagree with Phil on this. <laughs> On, on that issue because you know they they stick their finger in the wind and they know oh, which way the wind is blowing we don't want to piss off the far right well, fuck the far right fuck the far left too if it were if if, if 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 it's for the good of 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 the country if it's yeah if it's for the good of the country then you know what fuck the special interests yep and you know what he also uh, what oh, trump shit. might have been doing is setting up who the leakers are you know, maybe uh, oh yeah, oh yeah, he's six he, month yeah, old, right. uh, six month old information, and now you know maybe he's going to figure out who the leakers are, uh, wow. and this is a setup. Gee, he's and, a regular uh, Kojak, he isn't he? Proven yeah. that he is. He he doesn't have the ability to do that. He doesn't think one step ahead. He doesn't read anything. He watches television for his information. They can't give him security briefings every day because he doesn't want to hear it. And when they do, they've got to be mashed down into fit into one page. The guy so has the attention span. It's kind of like it's kind of like a share. little. They don't a, give him the a briefing. little kid before he has dinner. You have to mash his food up. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Doesn't everybody get their food mashed? Do you really think that he, he even thought that way, Phil? That he, yeah. he even, wow. Well, he, he does not like these leakers. He's going to go after them. And, you know, maybe this he is a doesn't like the press to, speaking out. God forbid yeah. they speak out against him. Yeah. And, and, and uh, well, report on what they speak out against them, doing. it's okay. If they tell the truth, it would be okay. Uh, the well, truth is reported to Trump. Giving them something to talk about for Christ's sake. I, mind, mind you, Phil. I, I, you know, I'd be willing to to bet yeah. that yeah. Trump will be impeached before the four years is over. Okay, I say, I'll so give it three hundred days. That, that doesn't mean he'll be thrown out of office, but yeah. he will be impeached uh, and and convicted in the in the Senate. Is it the Senate? No, no the, I'm not saying convicted. I just said impeached. Well, that means that they've got to get a uh, a majority an impeachment, of uh, an impeachment is only an indictment. Yeah. So right. here's the and question. Here's, well, the, right. here's, the, not, here's the question. Nixon resigned. He got impeached and he resigned. Do you true. think Trump would do that? Or do you think Trump doesn't have the he, his, his uh, personality he wouldn't allow him to quit? That's no. You know, uh, did Bill Clinton's? What's that? When, when Bill Clinton got impeached, did his personality allow him to quit? No, it didn't. But they didn't. So, uh, but but then well, what happened with that? Yeah, he got impeached. That was at the end of the term too, wasn't it? Yeah, and yeah. let's let's for a moment remember when he got impeached. So was for. Nixon. It is so embarrassing that we're going to have to tell future generations when they say, "Why was Clinton impeached?" <laughs> well, he got impeached because he got a blowjob in the Oval Office. Got impeached. Ah, because he you know, because he lied because he because he lied exactly the same way that every guy who cheats on no. his wife lies. He, 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 par- he parsed he his words. Oath. No, he did not lie, Phil. I'll give you. I'll, I'll play like you. He made up Trump. false facts. No, he didn't make up false facts. He said, well, "I did not sick. have sex with that woman, Monica yeah. Lewinsky." And yeah. you ask most guys, "Is a blowjob sex?" And they will say, "No." That's why he I, said I, he I didn't have sex with her. Blowjob is sex. I tell you, a blowjob no, is no, sex. No, no, no. For the sake of you're this argument, you're saying bodily fluids. It's sex. 
Well, yeah. If a, if I don't know. Blo- somebody, when, when people used to say to me, so you went out with so-and-so last night, you get laid? No, but I got blown. Well, that's because a blowjob <laughs> might be a four compared to a ten. You get laid, it's a ten. Blowjob's a four, but it's still sex. I did not have sex with that woman, Monica Lewinsky. Well, if so he, oral if, sex isn't sex. Yeah, and and he and he came think, because he got shit on her dress. He's got DNA on her dress. Yeah. And by the so way, by the way, let's remember, sex. let's remember the context in this whole thing too. Yeah. He went in. This was a a, 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 a what do you call it? A deposition yeah. in the Paula Jones case. Right. And all of a sudden, he's thrown this question about Monica Lewinsky, which he didn't even expect. Well, did he expect and, to and get asked are, if he was, had sex with uh, What are Paul most Jones? guys who are married going to say when, right. Uh, right. when hit with a question like that out of a clear blue sky that had nothing to do with the Paula Jones case? Nothing to do with right. the Paula Jones case. You, the last thing you expected, you, most guys would lie through their fucking teeth. Right. Okay. Well, then why didn't his attorney say this is not relevant? Uh, I don't know that attorneys in a deposition can do that because a, de- a deposition is simply a deposition. Right, but it had nothing to do with the Paula Jones case, so therefore, and even even Clinton should have known that he's an attorney. I you know. I, I believe that in the in the situation of a deposition, all is fair game. Well, you could say I'm not prepared to answer that. Here's our second call tonight, by the way, from Hawaii, and it is, of course, Renee Collins. Hello, Renee. How are you? Aloha to everyone. You, Sorry. I you, you've been listening to... to this mess? Yeah, you know what, Phil? I would like everybody to, to remember this statement. One thing that we learned, because this happened about the time I was working at Planned Parenthood, when Bill Clinton went through all of this, it was very clear to us that our definition of sex, our as older people definition of sex, is not correct, okay? So, Phil, here is the definition of sex. This is it. This is the only, if you ask a 15-year-old this question, then they will answer, then they will answer. They're lying to their parents, too. No, this is it. Here it is. Did you have sex with that woman? The answer is no. no. Did you have vaginal intercourse oh, he, he, with that he, woman? Somebody, somebody put this up on, on Facebook that what he said was, I did not have sexual relations with that woman. With that and right. the person is saying that relations would include oral sex. You no. bet it would. No. no. So here, to here a 15 it is. Year old, hey, Renee, to a 15-year-old that doesn't want their yep. parents to know that they're banging everybody and his brother, then uh, it's... Well, uh, let's, it's ask, oral, let's ask a woman, yeah. because this is, this is a very important distinction between men and women. If I were to say to you, uh, Renee, uh, uh, did you have sex with that guy, and all you had done was give him a blowjob, what would your answer be? It would be uh-huh. absolutely not. Oh, bullshit. Would you like to? Would you like to know why? Penetration That's, is everything. There you go. Uh, Generation only, below Clinton. us. No, Phil. Gen, listen, this is serious for all of you parents. This is serious. Teenagers do not. Or people younger than us, which is pretty much anybody at this point, do not believe that sex is anything other than vaginal penetration. Yep. They're lying to themselves. No, what about no, anal penetration? No, you're old-fashioned, Phil. That is all they believe. And so yeah, that means that anal sex is not sex. Just yeah, but means wait a minute. So that means I'm still a virgin. Not but wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Bill Clinton is not a kid. Bill Clinton no, is older than us. He's not a 15-year-old. He exactly. Using, he, was, he was telling us, or what he told us, is the definition of what kids tell us. Yes. And that is if it isn't vaginal intercourse, it isn't considered sex to them. And I got yeah, some I statements from Trump that I'd like to sell you. You know, it's the same wait a minute, thing. Wait a, minute, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Kid. This is important. It's an important fact. Yeah. Everything, anything other than vaginal intercourse, a kid considers. When did that, you that, start letting the 15 year old decide? I'll tell you what something. Is a blowjob is completely, and, I, and I'm it's sure Renee will agree with me on this. A blowjob is entirely different from vaginal sex because it does not include penetration. Penetration Absolutely. is the what could we call it the the benchmark. Let, no, no. What, so you, then you disagree the with Renee epidemic? then on account you, of hold it. You remember Alex. the AIDS epidemic what? in in San Francisco? Uh, now, as long as they were transferring bodily no, fluids, I, I forgot they were about the AIDS epidemic. That you, see, that's not what well, kids think. Epidemic? 
Well, kids also think that AIDS is not a big deal now because they can live yeah. through the pills. But, but, but when, the issue and, is, is that if it isn't vaginal penetration, it's not sex. In the early That's 80s, humping, you, dry had, humping, you had guys, you had dogs. gays. In the early blow 80s, jobs. you had gays in San Francisco Sierra that Apple, were giving each other blowjobs. They were getting uh, AIDS from the transfer of bodily no, fluids. No, they were not getting it from blowjobs, Phil, and I know this whole story. They were not getting them from blowjobs. Are you jobs. saying it's only anal penetration it was and anal there was some pen blood? It, it, yeah, it's, anal it's, penetration, the only time during a blowjob that it might cause a problem. Is with ejaculation. No, would be, no would be but, if but, you had some kind of cut in your mouth because there had to be the exchange of blood fluids. And yep. what happened with, with anal sex is there was a, always a bursting of blood vessels. You can't go down there and do that without, you know, yeah. causing a little rupturing. And then the semen, which is also a blood product, mixed with it, and that's what caused the AIDS. No, blow jobs were not, yep. for the most part, were not the culprit. Okay, it's so if sex. you did it anally and it wasn't a uh, vaginal, then it's still not sex. It's not sex. Well, let's ask the person who owns one, Brian. <laughs> Brian yeah. owns yes. one what? Uh, the question okay. is uh, because here we're talking about anal sex it's, and, and blowjobs. You on that, that in, in your case, you would consider that sex, right? As far as I'm concerned, yeah. By Renee's logic, I'm still a virgin. <laughs> yeah. I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't make it up this is what for, the kids told us well, well, I, first of all i'm agreeing with phil again and and, and rob the president is, and i'm kind of going to probably turn rob's logic against him and saying that the president is not a 15 year old kid right and a 15 year old kid can't be elected president you have to at least be 35 which is the age i am now and furthermore is in, in disagreement with alex it, um yeah, you may not be able to get AIDS from uh, or HIV from from a blowjob, but if the person has uh, uh, the, the person who's gi is giving the blowjob, who ha who's inserting the penis into the mouth, has uh, like uh, uh, gonorrhea or or genital warts or How about uh, gums, that too. I'm not, not talking about you know, there are other factors involved. And as far as I'm concerned, when it says. Oral sex is as much sex to me as a bathroom in that Married with Children episode uh, is a room because it's in the title, oral sex. Bath. No. Look, I'm just, <laughs> look, I'm not telling you that this is what I believe. I'm telling you what kids told us. This is what they, well, they told you. Us. That's what they and, told you. And, and, what is and, kids? Wait, 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 wait a minute. Jeff has his hand up. Just I, I think President Clinton proved himself. To be right by the fact he he stayed to become the president. It's as good uh, it's good enough for uh, me. They would have elected a dog catcher. Well, you got to remember they, they didn't they didn't they didn't impeach him based upon the fact that he had had sex with Monica Lewinsky, right. well, but that, that, is, is, is. that he denied it under oath, right. uh, and and that was it. But that had nothing to do with the case. That wasn't wasn't the reason he was being deposed. So because this was something. This was something that they went. This was their gotcha moment. He didn't even. Ex mouth. He he didn't expect this to come up. He didn't think anybody knew about it. You know. So but when the a other thing to or when somebody your, in the corner is cross-examined. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. First Jeff, then Brian. Yeah. yeah. All right. The other thing uh, that Renee's uh, presentation is, uh, I agree with you that the young people today. Are, Agree with that a hundred percent. I didn't make. Yeah, I did. Yeah, it, yeah. I we thought we thought one thing. We were walking around the planet thinking one thing, and yeah. then all of a sudden, the kids below us said, "Yeah, we don't think that that's true anymore." So it isn't me. It's just what came out of the Clinton, and which, as a healthcare provider, it was really interesting because, see, as we were trying to talk to children, or excuse me, and talk to teenagers and say, you know, this is blah blah blah, we're using the wrong terminology. We're using terminology that didn't that they couldn't understand because that's not their premise. So it was difficult for us, be, but it helped us learn what we should be saying to them, and it helped us couch the whole the whole uh, context of which you talk to a teenager or a young adult. Sex to us is one thing; sex to them is just vaginal penetration. If my kid would have said that she didn't have sex because she only gave the guy a blowjob, they would have been foot up ass. 
uh, you know, uh, that's and, because you're I, an old I, fashioned I, guy. Because you're an old fashioned guy. Had that kid, I would have rubbed his face in the concrete. You're an old fashioned guy. <laughs> you're, yeah, you're an old fashioned. You're, you're stuck up, and you're old fashioned. I'm just telling you, if you're going to talk to a teenager or a young adult, you need to know what you're talking I, about. I, I wouldn't talk to him. I just drown him. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> nice parenting. Good, good. Yeah, good. You're, First, you're I go beat the shit out of them, and then I drown. Them. I think it's. I think uh, I'd like to know who the kids were that you were talking to. Inner city kids, you know, are, what, what socioeconomic background about, those kids uh, privileged are. Privileged brats in Palo Alto. <laughs> I asked that question because I don't believe it's all kids. You know what? The thing is, is we used to think one thing, they determined it to be some, what their generation. Well, they being who? Yeah. They being, well, what's the demographic every, there? Everybody that came below us. Everybody well, that came, uh, excuse me, Renee, everybody that came after us. He wants to know no, no, no. where you did your yeah, uh, stint sure. with, uh, uh, with the, uh, whatever that, uh, Planned Planned Parenthood. Yeah. Parenthood. yeah. In San Jose. So it was in San Jose, California, which is a good mix of people. Uh, you've got... Uh, uh, where are you, where are you people, getting these kids from? Are these kids coming into this clinic? Um, most right. of it was outreach. We were getting it from the students and stuff like that. We would go out and start talking to them, and we would have these conversations with them about what was in the news, and it was coming up, well, they didn't really care because... Their definition of sex wasn't the same definition of what it was. Did you find? Did you find that they were? Did you find that they were using things like uh, using terminology like she gave me oral and didn't use the sex part? Yeah, she gave me a blowjob. We did. Yeah. We did a dry was, rub. The sex was kind of dropped off. Yeah. yeah. How about uh, conveniently didn't inhale. So it was okay. He, he smoked marijuana, yes. but he didn't inhale. He, he always had an excuse, you know. No. <laughs> it wasn't sex because he didn't penetrate. It wasn't smoking marijuana because he didn't inhale. What, what else didn't he do? Or I'm not a misogynist for having said I grabbed what he didn't women do by the was, pussy what, because what, I was engaging what in he, locker what, room talk. What he didn't See, this is what pisses me here, off. Here, here's, off what, wait, here, here's, here's what Clinton didn't do. He didn't yeah. give the Russians confidential material. No, yeah. but his wife did, and she sold him 20% of our uranium arsenal, you know, uh, and basically gave it to them. Uh, so, well, wait a minute, know, but that's wife, not bad because the Russians are people we should be able to get along with, right, Phil? And we probably will start getting along with them, and things will probably start getting better. What a bet. At, at least, at least <laughs> he doesn't have to say he didn't inhale, you know? Come on. No, he's no, going to he just lie about everything else. He's well, not I lying. Oh boy! Okay. Uh, I don't know. Phil, why? Does, you know, does anyone Phil. here believe that Clinton's uh, idea about I, I I didn't smoke or I didn't puff I didn't the cigarettes smoke. or whatever that was all bullshit? Is there anyone who disagrees with that? It was the same thing with the sex. Let me let me That's just let me just to say right. that when we talk when we talk about least, impeachable, Jeff is the most consistent hmm? here, aside from myself. Jeff, you know, yeah, it is bullshit. Of course, you smoke marijuana. You're being a lawyer and you're splitting hairs to suit your own self. Right. Just like you know, when somebody is back before, I wanted to make a question concerning when, whenever somebody is presented with something out of the blue, with the Paula Jones thing, and uh, you know, being presented with uh, Monica Lewinsky. Well, I he I've I've seen episodes of Law and Order and whatnot where you know, or when a witness or when a suspect is cross examined in the courtroom, they're 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 they're, they engage in this uh, back and forth with something, and then you know, as as it proceeds, you know, the prosecuting yeah. attorney or whatever presents them with a question that's. Uh, but I, I forget. Well, it seems something. to be out of the blue, but yet you know, it it, it it's a, it it gets it it catches them off guard, and sometimes you know, it gets them to admit. I, I, sure, I, I forget something. Wait a minute. I, I, forget, I forget. I phone. forget something. I forget yeah. something. Obviously, I was a deposition because Paula Jones was going to sue. Clinton, uh, mm -hmm. uh, did she win that suit? I can't remember. They settled. Oh, no. They settled. They settled. Yeah. yeah. All right. If it was she settled, just like with Trump fixed. University, now, there's a and she, got her, she got her nose fixed, and then she did a Jordache jeans commercial. <laughs> Whatever. I remember. But, uh, she, all kidding they, aside, you know, when there's a settlement, y'all are guilty. Pox on both your houses. At yeah, least. Oh, not debating that. That's for fucking sure. And Phil, I don't think this uranium thing is true. All well, the more reason why Bernie Sanders should have been again, the nominee. Huh? 
Where did you get that information, Phil? I never heard that information. That's because, uh, is that because you don't listen to the news, Fox. Alex. No, no, I don't read the, 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 the fake news you read. Well, I didn't read it in the fake news. This is stuff that's that's well, out there. Why don't you Google it? Where is it? Find it. Google, I, Google it right now for I, me. I Googled it, and it came out that, pre, uh, asshole, excuse me, 77 minutes into a Prince conference on Thursday, President Donald Trump was in defensive about the relationship with Russia. One key point was made to attempt to prove that this information with my, Russia wasn't true. And then he goes on to make the claim against Hillary Clinton about giving Russia 20% of our uranium when she was Secretary of the State. Now, I'm not on Snopes, which I'm going to throw. Snopes says that it's false, but, you know, Snopes, uh, I, I don't trust <laughs> Now, all of a sudden, you'll quote Snopes when it's right, but you won't when it, it, it suits what you want to believe. Uh, come on. It, 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 if Snopes said it isn't true, it isn't true. Uh, okay. Secretary that. Clinton's approval Adios. of a deal to transfer control of 20% of the uranium deposits. The Russian uh, company was quid pro quo exchange for donations to the Clinton Foundation. Yeah, sure. and she has the, uh, she had that, the well, authority to do saying, that. Right. Quid pro quo, pro quo for the Clinton quid Foundation. Quid pro quo. Yes. But, we so if it wasn't for the Clinton Foundation, she still transferred 20% of the uranium holdings uh, no. to the Russians. How do you get that? Okay, I, I, they're just saying that she didn't do it uh, for uh, uh, for for the Clinton Foundation, but she did it as the Secretary of State. Snopes, fake news. I'll have to look it up. Well, I, I, Snopes you know what, said it's not true. Snopes said it's not true. So never heard. You know, of. and I'm going to believe Trump. Same Trump is always it wrong was with stuff. True for the Clinton Foundation having a quid pro. Whoa. <laughs> All right. Very well, Very well spoken. Oh, and, boy. <laughs> but that they, they didn't say that it wasn't true for uh, the fact that the uranium went to the Russians. Did and, it go to the Russians? I don't know. I'm still reading. Okay. Uh, so stop uh, the arguing. The deal was not Clinton's to veto or approve. Uh, so I guess there was a deal, but they're saying it wasn't Clinton's fault. Uh, okay. Uh, among those accusations uh, that stray from the facts and attributing power to the veto of the Secretary Clinton. So that what they're saying is that she she could not uh, have approved or, or not approved. Right. She doesn't have that kind of deal. She's power. Secretary of State. She can't make that kind of a deal. Mm -hmm. Right. But, uh, you know, she's carrying out uh, 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 the, the, Obama's the, the, commands. No, no, stop right there. She didn't do it. She doesn't have the power to do it. And it was a lie. Erase it from your brain. And Trump said it, of course. Did, the did, uranium, did the uranium go to the Russians, yes or no? So, so far, three things that she didn't do. He oh. said she, he did three things, and she didn't do any of those things. But you go do the uranium tracking and tell, uh, let us know tomorrow. It's being parsed as oh, as a question with an add-on, and, and they're saying the add-on is, is not true. Uh, I'll do. I'll do a little more. Uh, or if somebody else, you know, have you seen anything about this? Because uh, this seems to have been repeated many, many, many times. So, in other words, you got just, this just little because fact repeated. because because Trump mentioned it the other day. But it wasn't Trump. Uh, it was. Uh, it, it was, was Trump. Uh, it's also true that large donations to the foundation of the chairman of Uranium hey, One. Hey, hey, hey! She isn't president of the United States. It doesn't mean shit to a tree now. What does mean shit to a tree is that our president is is committing treason and that our president uh, uh, fired Comey to shut him up. Okay, it wasn't treason. You're calling it treason. <clears throat> the State Department, as well if as I the sold, FBI. If I gave the secrets, if I gave secrets, if I gave secrets to the Russians, it's treason. I would be tried for treason. Because they're fighting the same fight we are against ISIS, and I don't think and and the and the and what he did and the FBI even no, says we're not fighting it we're not we're not treason. fighting the same, we're not fighting the same fight against ISIS. We're, we're against ISIS because they chopped off some Americans' heads. The Russians are against ISIS because they're trying to overthrow their pal. But the bottom line is, we're all against ISIS. Hey, Brian, <laughs> where did this, have you ever used yeah, this extra this? news feed before? 
I wonder. I was wondering if because uh, I've been looking on it on Snopes, I couldn't find it. Maybe it's too new because I as a, well, I also else? saw this on my phone earlier today while I was at work about this uh, shoving match between this alleged shoving match between uh, Trump and Pence. What what what? Shoving? President that. President called VP a traitor, then threw a sucker punch that left second <laughs> in command with possible concussion. Where's you, this? Uh, what? Can't. Where did you read this today? I'm inclined to believe it's fake, but you never know. Yeah, I think it's fake. This is a story from a a website called (laughs) extranewsfeed.com. But you know something? Thanks for By tomorrow, this will be truth. That's the problem with the internet. (laughs) Would it surprise you? No. I want to see him with a big bump on his nose or something. Tomorrow. It's so believable, though, especially the way they, you know, growing more isolated and paranoid by the hour. President Trump has started to pick fights with his aides and inner circle, including a vicious knockdown altercation with Vice President Pence during an Oval Office meeting. Oh, come on. If he hits you with a closed fist, it would still feel like a mosquito. Yeah. <laughs> He's a big guy. Who, Trump? Yeah. Yeah, but with, if he, you think he could throw a punch correctly? Uh, okay, let me let me ask this question. Like let let, let me off. ask this question, and, and Phil is not included in this because I know what his answer will be. Right. But how do you? It, 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 let's say Trump does get, <laughs> resigns from office. Let's say he just gives up. Mm-hmm. Okay, and we're left with Pence. Could yeah. you live better with Pence than you have with Trump? I think the world settles down more. I think Pence is a politician. I don't like his politics. It would be more like, uh, you know, Romney or, uh, you know, or Bush, where you just would disagree with him, but you wouldn't fear for the safety of the country in terms of, uh, you know, that's that's my. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't like the politics. Because because I'll tell you, today, uh, uh, McConnell. Uh, said uh, something very interesting in a press conference. Um, He said, uh, I think he was asked, what do you feel about what's going on? And his reply was, well, I think we could use with a little less drama from this administration. And this is is from a guy who is a a staunch Republican. He said, we could use a little less of this drama that's been going on. Um, It's speaking to the Republicans who just want to get stuff done. Yeah, well, he said we, we can't get anything done because of all this drama that's going on. Yeah, yeah. but we couldn't get anything done because the Republicans of the last two years have been nothing but instru- uh, obstructionists. Well, that's right. true. What, what that's, exactly are we going to be doing that, here? That's true. And the we Democrats could argue, are obstructionists. We could argue, now. argue that. No, they're not. We, the Trump's and, his and, own obstruction. We could argue that. With, we could argue that with Mitch McConnell. But the fact is that we have to just pay attention to what he said today, and it looks like the Republicans are getting a little tired, a little exhausted of having to put a fire out every day that has nothing to do with what they want to do with the country. Putting it mildly, putting it more uh, than mildly, putting it more severely, the cracks are starting to show in the foundation. Well, I yeah, mean, I also think there, that that the whole undercurrent of the Trump administration, which is the Tea Party, is running along just fine with all the cover that Trump's mouth has been giving them. Well, well, We're not paying attention to the shit on the bottom because Trump is such a bombastic. Person. Well, you, you say that there's there's, a, there's cracks in the foundation. I think the problem with this administration is it didn't have any foundation to begin with. Well, I'm talking about the GOP yeah, yeah. as a whole. I, but, but I think these... The I'm not just Trump, talking about Trump the and associates, I'm talking about the GOP as a whole. Trump and associates are complete amateurs. And they, they don't know the they don't know, they don't know what they're doing, and they don't know how to, co- to be cohesive enough to get something moving in a certain direction. I Trump feels Trump feels that this to Trump this is just hey it's, I won the presidency. What? I think I'm they're sorry. doing lots of stuff. I think Renee might be right that these tweets are nothing more than a cover up to allow all this stuff to get done and it it sounds like the work of Bannon uh which is yeah. uh, to create some of this misinformation, a smoke screen and then all this other stuff starts getting done and if you if you uh you know stop trying to say that the stuff isn't getting done when it is getting done and really look at what he has accomplished 
uh, there's there's been a lot of things. There's the Keystone Pipeline. There's there's all sorts of things that have gone through. And of course, I support those things, but uh, I think that a, a lot of it's going through because Trump is creating this, this sort of uh, cloud. Uh, well, that then that's not good either. If, if you have to do that to get things passed, that's not good either. Oh, hey, listen, we've pretty- run out of time. Uh, for the Phil Meyer show. We can carry this discussion (laughs) on to the intersection. Uh, Yeah, you can carry his uh, whole discussion on the intersection, which is next with uh, Jack and Amy. Rob, thank you. I'm glad your nutsack's fine. Jeff, (laughs) always a pleasure. Brian, always a pleasure. Phil, uh, Kevin, thank you. And Renee. Don't forget about the other Hawaiian. The other yeah, Hawaiian. No. We had two Hawaiians on tonight. <laughs> I heard Jim. James Lee. Yeah. Anyway, thank you all. I appreciate your participation and hope you will do it again tomorrow night. And maybe we can also have a feed through Facebook that will be a little less uh, sporadic. I probably and, won't be here tomorrow. Oh, but. oh okay. That's right. fine, too. Anyway, we'll see, we'll see you uh, then. We'll see you Wednesday, uh, Thursday, Thursday, or whenever you're around next. Anyway, <laughs> bye bye, everybody. I want to thank you for having joined me tonight. And uh, I want to thank everybody out there for having, uh, oh, wait a minute, hold on a second. I need to put me up, for having joined me <laughs> tonight as well. And uh, stay tuned for Jack and Amy. They're next over most of the same station with uh, uh, a wonderful program. Yes, it's called The Intersection. I'm Alex Bennett. See you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. And as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? <laughs>